Good evening, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, joined again by Eric Stevens of GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And Eric, thanks so much for joining us again tonight. Happy to be here, Dave. Thanks, Eric. And uh, we've been talking about the complex uh, uh, gathering of information uh, from satellites looking down on the uh, surface of the planet and some of those orbits around the planet work for Alaska and some of them don't. There's a lot of challenges with those. Uh, how can we get better imagery for the poles and specifically for Alaska? Right. Well, today we're going to talk about a very interesting kind of satellite orbit that mm -hmm. has potential to be real helpful for the high latitudes. Okay. Especially us here in Alaska, Canadians, mm -hmm. Russians, Norwegians will all be interested in this. Mm -hmm. Um, the satellites are not in orbit yet. Mm -hmm. Now the future is, is uncertain, but it's possible, and if this happens, it will be wonderful huh, for Alaska. Okay. It's called the highly elliptical orbit. Oh, that it's good. interesting. <laughs> yeah. And okay. I think first to help our discussion, we should get back to some of Kepler's laws and, and how okay. do satellites work. Sure. Kepler's first law, an orbit of a planet around a sun or a weather satellite around the Earth, mm -hmm is not necessarily a circle, it's an ellipse. Okay. And uh, the highly elliptical orbit mm -hmm. takes advantage of this aspect. We're gonna put the Earth in one of the ellipse and then stretch, one of the foci of the ellipse, okay. and then stretch that ellipse out real far to make it highly elliptical. And the foci is that, that bend part of the, the end of the ellipse. If you're gonna stretch out a rubber band, that would be the mm -hmm. center, kind of the stretchy part. The yes, end. Okay. yeah, exactly. Okay. And then um, Kepler's second law says, that the closer something is to the thing that it's orbiting, mm -hmm. the faster it goes. Okay. We see this in the solar system, that Mercury flies around the sun real right. fast. Um, Jupiter, much slower. Jupiter's further away, it's mm -hmm. slower. Mercury's closer in, it's faster. This happens with weather satellites, too. Mm -hmm. Even uh, satellites like the International Space Station, it's pretty close to the Earth. It goes around the Earth in only 90 minutes. Okay. That thing is moving. Fast. It's only 250 miles away. So how can we take advantage of these two aspects of Kepler's laws of motion uh -huh. to get better weather surveillance of Alaska. And this highly elliptical orbit is going to be the approach. So we have with us today our friendly planet Earth right. and our simulated um, satellite that yeah. lit off of this salt it's shaker like here. Sputnik there. Yeah. Here it is, it's <laughs> shiny, it's metal, it's space worthy. And what we want to be able to do is, could you have a satellite hover over over the top of the world, up over Alaska. You mm. can't really do that. Be, Geostationary hard, satellites right? have to be over the equator. Okay. So how, how could we almost solve this? And this is, this is the tricky part. Maybe uh, should we uh, tilt the Can Earth tilt over? The other, focus we're, on the pole, that's what we're trying to accomplish right. here, right? So here okay. we have the northern side of the planet, mm -hmm. and we're gonna trace out the orbit of a satellite with this salt shaker okay. lid here. Now imagine a highly elliptical orbit, so let's put, the Earth in one of the foci of the ellipse, okay. and we'll have an imaginary foci out here. Okay. So the satellite will not go in a circle around the Earth, but will be in this long, strung out ellipse. Okay. So the satellite will go... Kind of like a racetrack. Yes, okay. there you go, like a racetrack. Okay. So it's an oval, elliptical yeah. shape like that. And notice now that when the satellite's over here, mm -hmm. we've got a nice view of the northern hemisphere the around there's down. Alaska, okay. Russia, Canada, mm -hmm. Greenland, all there. So that's um, the ellipse aspect of an orbit, Kepler's okay. first law. The second law saying that when you're further away as a satellite, you go slower. Oh. And this we can take okay. real advantage of. Huh. Because the way this orbit works, when the satellite goes over Antarctica here, right. it's gonna be close to the Earth. Okay. It's gonna be moving, whoosh, mm -hmm. goes on by. And then as it comes out here, it will slow down. This oh, increases what is known as the dwell time. The satellite will just hang here looking mm -hmm. for hours at Alaska. Wow. and the high Arctic. And then eventually it will come around and it will accelerate and whiz around the South Pole and then mm -hmm. come back and hang here for a while because it's further away from the planet, it goes slower. Yeah. It has to, that's the laws of motion. And such, like that, repeating. Wow. Now the, the real important way to make this work is you have to have two satellites. Okay. So that while one is whipping around the pole, you've got the other one out here, and they work as a team. You could then get a series of images of Alaska that can be almost from a quasi a constant frame of reference, right. and you can loop them together to make uh, to make movies. You can take a picture every ten minutes, say, uh -huh. of Alaska, and then loop it 
playing it at several frames a second, you, you could see the clouds whiz on by. You know, the Weather Channel, uh, weather broadcasters in the lower 48 especially mm -hmm. can show these movie loops from right. the geostationary satellites. In Alaska, we've never really been able to do that very well, huh. especially in the higher, most northern parts of the state, okay. because those geostationary satellites are over the equator, it's not a good view. And this highly elliptical orbit, whipping mm -hmm. around the South Pole and then dwelling up here, would be a way for us to get that constant frame of reference and do really good weather surveillance over the Arctic, seeing where those storms are, where they're going. Right. Nothing quite like a, a movie loop of the weather in time to really illustrate what's important, what's going on. And compared to what we have right now, we just have small windows or snapshots of what's going on with the mm -hmm. polar orbiters. We don't have that yep. long range view that's looking top down to give us that complete motion picture that helps us understand so much of, of the atmosphere yep. at this There's point. There's so many different kinds of satellites. Each, each has their advantage. Mm -hmm. Each is important. And the highly elliptical orbit satellite will also fit into that scheme. It, mm -hmm. It's a nifty idea to, to solve an Alaskan challenge. That's fantastic. Well, that sounds really exciting. Again, a, kind of a satellite dream of the future to come. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thanks for joining us today, Eric. We really appreciate the information. And if you'd like to learn more about what Eric does at GINA, at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, we invite you to visit the web address that you see on your screen there. Uh, for Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. Mm -hmm.